Well, it takes 510 seconds to get into space from the launch pad, eight and a half minutes. Uh, so you go from zero to 18,000 miles an hour in that period of time. Um, takes a couple hundred miles is all to get from the surface of the Earth into, into space. Uh, coming home, though, is, is very different because you're already in space, of course. You're up above the atmosphere. Um, you slow down by only a couple hundred miles an hour from 18,000 to, you know, 18,000 minus 200 and something is enough to cause you to fall out of orbit. And you do your deorbit burn to slow yourself down somewhere over Australia to land in Florida. And that interval is about an hour. So the same amount of energy that you put into getting into space in eight and a half minutes is now dissipated over an hour. So if you think about it, that means that it's a much less violent uh, period of time, but in some ways no less interesting because the first half hour basically is free falling. So I'm, I'm still weightless, but I haven't hit the atmosphere yet, so I haven't started decelerating really very much. So the, the uh, rocket thrusters slow me down 200 miles an hour. That's enough to cause me to hit the atmosphere, um, you know, basically 4,000 miles or so from my landing site. So that's about a half hour's worth. So I'm still floating, I'm still doing all that. When I first hit the atmosphere, though, that's when it gets really interesting because it's like, it's like striking a match or something. It's friction, literally. Uh, I'm going very, very fast, even though there aren't many molecules of, of atmosphere up there. there. I'm putting so much energy into those, those few molecules that, that it's like being inside a, a fluorescent light. Uh, and initially, they glow a salmon pink color and you're surrounded by this, this, this uh, envelope of, of plasma that, that's burning salmon pink and as you go slower and slower as, as you hit more of the atmosphere and get and the atmosphere is thicker it slows you down more you're putting less energy into into more molecules and it, and it finally winds up being kind of a dull white and then it fades to, to nothing but but being inside that uh, that plasma is is, is fascinating. Of course, the other interesting thing is, you know, we're in our spacesuits and everything, but, but you could put your bare hand against the window. Outside is 2,400 degrees. Inside is barely warm to the back of your hand. Now, there are three panes of glass in between, but, and they're pretty thick glass, but still the fact that you know, here you are, you know, literally burning into, into the atmosphere and the tiles of the shuttle and the windows and, and the heat shields and everything are able to, to dissipate that heat. So over the course of that, that second half hour, I'm slowing from 17,000, you know, or so miles an hour to arrive overhead the, the landing site 10 miles straight up. And from 10 miles straight up, to the ground is only about five minutes. And that's where I go subsonic. Just under four minutes to touch down. So, so you think about arriving overhead your landing field and you're still at the speed of sound. That's where I slow down to, uh, to landing speed. And then the, uh, the kind of corkscrew pattern that I fly has got a glide slope about 10 times as steep as, a, as an airliner. So it's about 20 degrees uh, of a dive or a glide slope. And I'm going about 300 or so uh, as opposed to about 150. So I'm going twice as fast and 10 times as steep. Now why? Uh, airliners have engines, of course, and we don't. The last powered event for the space shuttle is when you did the deorbit burn half a world away. You know, some people say it has the gliding characteristics of a brick. I think John Young, who flew the very first space shuttle flight, uh, landed on the moon and did all kinds of other things in his, in his six missions, you know, he used to say it was like a lead safe with the door open. And, and the door open gives you a little bit of lift, basically. <laughs> 
Um, but you don't experience that. I mean, that's, that's true. That's the gliding characteristic that it has, and that's the reason why you come down at such a steep angle. But in terms of how it flies, how it handles, it handles very much like a modern fighter airplane, which is remarkable uh, given the fact that the shuttle itself weighs about 100 tons when it's coming in for landing. And, and it still handles like, like a fighter plane. And it's a very nice handling um, aircraft at that point. Um, you fly the 20 degree glide slope until you get to about 1,500 feet above the ground. And then you start pulling the nose up. And then you fly a very shallow final approach that's uh, similar to a, to a commercial airliner. And of course, as soon as I pull the nose up, then I start decelerating quite a bit. And so I go from 300 very rapidly to uh, to 250 or so. I put the landing gear down about 300 feet above the ground because I don't have engines, so I'm not going around. I'm, I'm going to land. And so um, I put the landing gear down, and, and the landing gear goes down with one hydraulic system, two hydraulic systems, one pyrotechnic system, two pyrotechnic systems in order to make sure that the landing gear do come down. Um, and, and then I touch down about 200 um, and then I put out my uh, drag parachute, and uh, you know the the miracle of, of it all is is that uh, within a few seconds, uh, that's when you arrive at, at wheel stop, compared to what they predicted months before you took off. 